David Johansson on New Yorkin rock and roll skenen Big Daddy. Mies, joka on uurtanut uraa omalla mielettömällä tavallaan jo neljän vuosikymmenen ajan. Ilman New York Dollsia ei olisi ollut Ramonesia, Sex Pistolsia tai Hanoi Rocksia. Tämä on fakta. You think I'm a whore, but I got a, a heart of gold. You're locking your doors, you're leaving me out in the cold. But I've been born and baby, I've been sold and I, I need protection from the cold. And you may think that my youth Manage been the cause of all this insanity. This whole damn world's got so much uncertainty. I sure wish you'd see something. You think I'm a whore, but I got a heart of gold. You're locking your doors, you're leaving me out in the cold. But well, I've been bought and baby, I've been sold and I need protection from the cold. Hello, David. Hi, Sammy. How you doing? I'm good. How you doing? I never felt better in my life. <laughs> As always. <laughs> <laughs> I became conscious of music. I remember when I was like five, and it's a funny thing. It was a Stone song. It was the cowbell in Honky Tonk Women. That's mm -hmm. literally my first memory of music. Mm -hmm. When did you become conscious of? I was about that age. I mean, you know, I took music so much for granted because I'm like the third kid in my family mm -hmm. out of six kids. So, like, music was playing when I showed up. You know that Fats Domino song? What you gonna do when the whale runs dry? Bitch, you gonna lay right down and cry that one. Yeah. I got very interested then, you know, in, in music. I used to really love singing along with the platters. When the twilight has come, <laughs> ah, and the songbirds are singing. <laughs> I used to love that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I went to the Murray the K show. He was a DJ in New York, right? He was like a cult leader in New York. And uh, he used to have live shows yeah. and he would have like, literally like 20 acts. Right. And every act you could possibly want to see, you know? And they would play like, they would come out and just like be like an explosion. Cream was in it. The Who was in it. What the hell? The Who would come out Hello. like in like, because I said I'd stay like three times, you know. Yeah. I would stay there all day and watch it. But like the Who would come out and do like a medley of like, I don't know, two songs or whatever, and just in three minutes just like destroy the place. And that was like, oh, wow, it was really exciting. Like performer-wise, Mitch Ryder comes out. Oh, wow, yeah. And does like this insanity. I mean, like, he comes out in the kind of like, kind of like a tuxedo and then like, Three minutes later, he's like naked and soaked in sweat, you know, <laughs> yeah. and uh, tears the place down. Yeah. I mean, the people, I was just like really enamored. Like, I was like, that's what I want to do. Yeah, you yeah. Know?
But you had all these sores of music in New York. I mean, this is, this is like the, the, the big thing, is that you got to see all these things live and experience all these things, you know, changes in music live. Yeah. Because in like, growing up in Finland, it was like, you were lucky if Alice Cooper came to do a press conference in Helsinki, and that yeah. was it. Yeah, you stuff. would see like, you know, Ray Charles and Santana and like Janis Joplin and all kinds of incredible wow. stuff. So that kind of opened your mind to other kinds of music that it wasn't just... Well, you know, I always liked a lot of kinds of music, yeah. you know? I used to, I like more stuff than I probably don't like. I mean, it's mm -hmm. like, it, I, like, I dig stuff and I want to dig stuff, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not like this kind of, like, critical person in a way. I mean, in a way, I'm like an OG hipster and I'm really obnoxious, but in a lot of ways, I, I'm looking for stuff I want to dig and I want to mm -hmm. enjoy life, you know, and I want... Yeah stuff that's going to enrich me. Because with the dolls, it was like very raw and it was very rough. The only thing that I could like compare it to was like very early Stones and Howling Wolf and Blues Guys. Did you do that on purpose or was it just because inadequacy no. in, in, no. in uh, virtuosity of your instruments? Yeah. You, know? you know, I saw this thing, I was just looking at something on YouTube the other day and I saw this thing on the Kinks when they started, like a documentary. God, the way they sounded was unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. And uh, no, it's just like, you know, that we were playing as best we could. Right. You know, so we were doing our thing, you know. Yeah, yeah. Stumbling along. Yeah. Because it was funny when we went to Japan, we rehearsed a lot. Do you remember this? We rehearsed like a couple of weeks nonstop, and we, we came super tight. And we played in Osaka, I think, the first gig, and he just came on me on stage. It was like, Seven, this is not working at all. And it was like my first tour with you. I was like, what's not working? And after the gig, it was, he was like, way too tight no more rehearsals <laughs> ever and that was it we never rehearsed after that <laughs> in six years there was no rehearsals we just made the records and it went on the road and that yeah. was it yeah. so it's yeah. yeah i understand where it's coming from it, it has yeah. to have that little kind of falling apart vibe in order oh, to work know, life is just much more interesting when it's like not so rehearsed type thing. Yeah. you know what i mean yeah, yeah, yeah. i mean you gotta get together and say okay the song goes like this kind of work it out but then you want it to be like if it gets too tight then it's like pretty much like you're doing the same representation of the song every night you know right. and that's not there's not like no jazz in it you know it's like no improvisation yeah. no it whatever you want to call it it's nice when it you don't know what's going to happen next and gives it a chance to evolve and then devolve and then fall apart and then come back together and all that exactly. kind of stuff you know which is really the way I've always approached music, and you know, I kind of like get, per I've done that with Latin music, with a lot of stuff, and you know, I just kind of like get permeated by it until it becomes a part of me. And then it becomes almost like a way to live. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's almost like having a Bible or something. You know what I right. mean? So, uh, and then the music like becomes a part of you, and then you evolve and become like, much more of a person than you were before you, you know, got into, you know this, right. before you got into this yeah. music, so. I really got into that music, and then, so like, you know, I like song, you know, singers from all countries, really, and if a singer's got soul, and he's really kind of like expressing what it means to be conscious on the planet, you know, it's mm -hmm. like, uh, it talks to me, you know. Exactly. So, you know, when you start doing records and stuff and then you have to take the record around to other places and mm -hmm. stuff, it's something about it yeah. changes. When you're in New York and you're playing, it's like, you don't have to explain anything to right, anybody exactly. because everybody... It goes by its own energy. Yeah, and everybody yeah. knows what's happening, kind yeah. of, you know. At least they used to. Right? Yeah. Uncertainty I sure wish you'd see 
Oh. 